hi there welcome to Microsoft endpoint manager introduction lecture this is going to be the first video for understanding about Microsoft endpoint manager products and I will be deep driving about all the features and the capabilities of each of these products like Microsoft Intune configuration manager endpoint analytics and co-management with Microsoft endpoint manager Windows autopilot with Microsoft endpoint manager so I will be deep driving all of these at the high level and once you understand this you could actually free to learn any other topics within the Microsoft Endpoint Manager so I request this is the first video definitely you shouldn't be missing it because this talks about all the introduction all the capabilities and all the common questions that might you might have on your brain so you could you know clear all of that stuff and if you are coming from a system background it clears a lot of you know questions definitely that might be you no know, clear within this short video and if you're visiting as a first time or if you're trying to learn the Microsoft Intune you're most welcome and that way uh, I'm actually covering from a basic level so uh, it definitely help you also if you're visiting for the first time please do subscribe and hit that bell button so that you will be notified for further any future videos thank you and also share those videos all those in tune communities and also on a facebook groups or linkedin groups so that that helps others to uh, get this knowledge also will be transferred for free of cost and you don't need to buy anybody's course because i'm going to cover everything for free for you here thank you for watching this i'll continue with the lecture now just you know let you know that the microsoft endpoint manager okay this is a tool or this is a product uh, newly introduced in uh, 2019 uh, if I'm correctly remember so what happened is within this product the existing fee of the products has been merged when I say much uh, it was actually uh, for example if you take it to SCCM this we call it as the configuration manager earlier we used to call SCCM so you know that why we call SCCM SCCM actually stands for uh, there's no direct word called SCCM to be frank as per Microsoft but how, how we as a community as named as SCCM is it is actually part of system center family and the ending with the configuration manager so if you just go to the Microsoft documentation also you will see as a configuration manager only so this configuration manager manager was part of a product family called system center so earlier system center it used to have a DPM and that's a data production manager and virtualization manager and also your ops SCOM you know right the uh, operations manager so that's a different tools you used to have it okay so along with that you also have a configuration manager as the a separate tool so with this tool has been you know uh, come out of system center family and join to endpoint manager product family okay so earlier also microsoft intune used to be the uh, ideally a single solution uh, even this was initially how it was started is they started on a couple of uh, microsoft servers uh, with respect to a few uh, few regions later point they moved this to the merge to the azure infrastructure okay and later point uh, they completely so later point what they have done is they uh, completely uh, moved to the azure vault okay and now uh, that product also they have you know uh, the ui all of that things has been changed and merged to another product called the microsoft endpoint manager okay and uh, there is another product called desktop analytics also this is a new not really new if you ever work with the application compatibility toolkit or windows error reporting that's the same tool that has been moved to uh, cloud as a service so that's now we call it as a da so within this da uh, this tool also can be managed from a endpoint manager now coming back to the co-management it's like a co-management is uh, like you know I, I would put it in this way so earlier when you have in tune to manage the mobile devices we used to what we used to do is we used to go for a hybrid uh, configuration uh, for the device management capabilities so with the integration of a system so that has been completely taken out now and what they have done is a machine if a single machine remember my friends a single machine has a two agents let's say one from a ccm client other one from a intune enrolled 
in that case uh, this machine can you know uh, work as a co-managed meaning two places it can be managed we are going to learn lay, uh, within this slide also because i'm not it given any of the introduction of these products i'm just giving a high level overview and later point we will jump into the in-depth of everything okay every of these five products okay so just the you know one line uh, i'm trying to explain what is your co-management so a machine has a uh, two agents and this can be managed with the help of a co-management technology okay and uh, coming back to the autopilot autopilot is uh, simple like you know when you try to when you try to install the operating system you normally get it like a, a region and the language and the keyboard options and all of this stuff right so these this is called oob actually that is called out of box experience okay so this oob experience can be automated at the same time the machine also can join to either azure ad or to your on-premises active directory so these steps can be fully automated meaning let's say if you're getting a device or you purchased a device from on-premises uh, sorry from lenovo or dell or any other hardware vendor you would definitely what happens you would uh you would get the similar uber experience right it's gonna ask you who's gonna use this computer what's the username what's the password what's the region time zone, all kind of you know normal things it, it's gonna ask you so these things uh, which are coming from hardware vendor also can be automated with the help of autopilot we are going to learn in a minute on this also as an introduction so there are you know five different products just you know let you know that what we have learned so far is microsoft endpoint manager is a new product that has merged with five different either products i'm use i'm going to use a different word call now technology so as i said some of them are products some of them are technology so if you ask me uh, you know can you refer you know what is a technology yes my friend autopilot is a technology it's not a product meaning if you can you know script it this technology the way you want it it can work for you let's see you have a wmi right so the way you want it you can query to the wmi and get the information similarly the powershell right so one person might have a different um different methods you know query to get that so some other person have some other way to write the script and get it similarly that's called a kind of you know technology or your skill right similarly autopilot also provides a technology for you to you know utilize okay so i use a word out of this uh, slide some of them are products some of them are technologies okay now let's understand uh, what we're going to learn within this course we are going to learn uh out of these five products microsoft intune we are going to learn in depth and also part of configuration manager with respect to the co-management we are going to learn and uh, we're not going to learn about the uh, da or desktop analytics i can show you if you want some of the videos especially for the da it needs a lot of uh, time and a lot of machines to uh, process actual data to show you in a visualized way so i'm going to talk on what is de uh, within this uh, initially about the way we are going to use it so if you all are interested we will give a try on that but uh, mostly with the recordings okay because it takes a lot of time to get that uh, and coming back to the windows autopilot uh, and co-management we also gonna learn these things we are gonna touch up the cloud attach are the concepts that are related to the co-management or concepts that are needed to integrate with Intune. We are gonna learn on that, okay? We are gonna learn about the Microsoft Intune. What exactly Microsoft Intune? So Microsoft Intune is this product, is part of Endpoint Manager, right? And this product is completely a cloud-based, which was built on a Microsoft Azure cloud, okay? Um, this is 100% cloud-based uh, software or service uh, which gives you as the uh, some of the capabilities let's see you can manage the mobile devices when i say exactly what exactly the mobile devices when we refer as a mobile device so now these days the user is the center point when i say user is a center point he, the user can come up from a different devices it can be ios or it can be a mac device or it can be google devices like a mobile phones or windows devices right so these devices to manage a ccm is not capable 
in a, in a some certain extent so that's where microsoft intune can you know come in and it can address those issues that's why what microsoft has done is they released this product and they merged all of this for your information let's say you have a license with the configuration manager meaning you can free to use intune also okay some of the uh, users who have the office 365 subscription like e3 kind of you know different subscriptions we will talk about the licensing later point but if you if you talk about the office 365 licensing then you can also use the intune uh, as the built-in feature okay now I, I refer as a mdm or mobile device management which refers to it can address a lot of a uh, lot of mobile management capabilities like for managing the devices different platforms okay and also i'm also referring here mobile application management so what exactly mobile application management let's say my friends you have a, a any any of the device let's say android or maybe ios device let's say within that you are going to your settings and you want to restrict uh the mobile database uh, uh, data utilization so you might have some option there what if uh, within the settings you are looking for some option which is not available then you can actually reach the mobile vendor so in this case if it is a uh, google and right you can reach the google or if the manufacturer is coming from uh, coming from your samsung or maybe apple devices then you can reach them that's called the uh, vendor specific and then they would they would actually come up with some kind of you know uh, very similar to the xml configuration i don't say that's an xml configuration but they give you that option what what was missing in that you can contact or you can contact the forum uh, to get that information so what i wanted to say here is some features if you cannot uh, manage with the intune you can do uh, by writing a custom settings okay and that is possible so that's called you know we can uh, another way we can put it as an application uh, level management also can be done okay now you can also deploy the application let's say you can control the features what features to be enabled on those company devices so the device when we say device device is not own just you sometimes or not sometimes actually in the companies they buy the mobile devices and they offer the device to the user so that they are more productive so you can actually control some of the features on those devices uh, let's say copy paste can be uh, controlled not to you know copy the corporate data and paste it into maybe his facebook or his gmail id such things can be controlled and also enterprise uh, uh, you have the google enterprises and operating system i'm going to talk on that my friends you all know for now maybe as you have a google android as the operating system but when it comes to the management uh, how you're going to manage you're going to manage with operating system capabilities called google enterprise uh, for work okay google enterprise offering we can say so there is a different management options um, we can talk on that so i'm going to talk on that later point when we move to the android enterprise for this point of at uh, this point of time you can remember that android has different offerings or different management capabilities one can be done with the android enterprise offering also and 99 point uh, you know whatever the percentage you want to take it as a ninth all of them will use android enterprise they're not going to use the insecure method which is called da uh, direct access uh, or device administration we would put it right way would be the da so da we are not going to work on it so you might be you know, confusing what it is for now leave it uh, it's just the android you can manage and also ios ipad so for your information if you're quite new to the android uh, apple devices or uh, when you have an apple device uh when i say apple iphone and also ipad both have a different operating system my friends we always refer as ios but uh, it has a different operating system ipads has ipad operating system called I ipad os and ios devices that's a mobile phones are your apple devices apple phone phones have the ios device and similarly the laptops that comes from apple will consist of a mac os why i was talking this is if you don't know these things uh, again 
you cannot create the required profiles and configurations um, with uh, to manage these kind of you know devices and you know the windows devices anyway so these things can be managed and uh, definitely you can pu uh, push the a different type of applications when i say application applications can be from a google play store or microsoft store or maybe ios store or maybe exes or maybe msis or you need to you know convert that standard applications to intune compatibility format okay we're going to talk on that but at the end you know if you ask me the future wise yes my friends with the help of microsoft intune you can manage the mobile devices you can manage the mobile application settings and device settings and also you can manage ios ipad mac and windows devices and also you can uh, manage the uh, these devices by integrating azure active directory meaning these devices actually uh, part of your azure active directory okay meaning the identity will be coming from microsoft azure active directory okay so that's a base so that's why within this session we are going to learn we are going to learn azure active directory as a first step then only we will move to the n1 manager or intune okay and uh, coming back to the uh, other uh, options you can also if you are part of atp subscriptions you can also manage the uh, atp defender uh, configurations on the mobile to secure and you have any of the group policies on your on-premises that can be configured on your devices and can be applied as a admx template and we also talked about the uh, applications deployment for different configuration different types so i'm not going to talk what is win32 what is line of business application at this point of time this is not a right point you know talk but you have a multiple options to deploy like exes msis and you might have to convert that exes or msis to a certain standard which can understand by intune okay yes you can also push your scripts and that can be also converted to intune format we're going to talk on that deep drive okay and these things are uh, specific to the uh, by platform when i say platform like windows different ios or google it would be different okay and on top of all of these solutions you can actually apply something called a complaints policies so a complaints policy is a baseline okay which is very important uh, for any of the company you might you know think that your devices should have certain operating system built and the and the version uh, and also the antivirus some of the firewall settings some other settings that needs to be followed then only you are you can onboard that device to your uh, company and later point if is not falling in between those standards or that standards are not found you can stop the device uh, not to communicate with microsoft intune with the help of not just the intune it's not gonna uh, this is not the work of intune but as i said earlier this intune is depends on microsoft azure ed as the identity so azure ed has some option called conditional access so you can actually utilize the conditional access to you, you can put some kind of you know conditions here let's say if the this is not the feature of intune this is a feature of azure active directory a user coming and if is part of some of the groups or some of the uh, cloud application is trying to access uh, from a non known location or it is not complained in the azure ad uh, i mean it's not part of the azure ad or not part of intune then you can actually block it the access or you can enforce some kind of you know conditions to be you know apply on that uh, user so these things you can actually uh, configure with the help of conditional access okay that's just the you know uh, some uh, some uh, how we can utilize the complaints is one example so so other example would be the you can measure whether this user has a complaints or not okay and you can uh, also deploy the applications features and settings to your devices that's all about the intune introduction i'm not talking about the capabilities at this point of time i'm just giving you the introduction to the microsoft intune if somebody asks what is microsoft intune yes it's a cloud-based uh, mdm solution along with the applications can be managed features device controlling features are available 
okay so i hope that's clear now i'm going to move to the configuration manager with this with these five tools with these five tools you have a single console which i'm going to talk on this okay that's called the endpoint mm -hmm. management admin center so what microsoft is trying to push is uh, they're offering whatever they're offering within this microsoft endpoint manager they just wanted to have a single console so within this demo or within this uh, within this course content we also manage we also see the devices that are going to come up from SCCM. so when we attach the machines to uh, endpoint manager you're gonna get the devices uh, which are coming from SCCM, and that also can be viewed. You can run the uh, some kind of you know, configuration. You can deploy some applications. You can see the devices part of what collection. You can run the CMP vote. You can run some scrapes on top of it. Like that, you can do it. So the statement partially is correct earlier. Now, now these the mobile device management capabilities completely taken out from configuration manager and it's just moved to the intune uh, and they offered a new technology within this uh, co-management microsoft uh, for the configuration manager we're talking about the sccm okay so this sccm product is now part of uh, Microsoft Endpoint Manager. So in case if you if you own the SCCM license, you can feel free to you know use the Intune license also from the licensing point of view. So the use cases for the SCCM in this case, uh, just for the SCCM I'm talking about. So this is mostly focused on the on-premises uh, solution where you can manage your uh, desktops and servers. Okay, whereas Intune cannot manage the servers for your information and uh, that's one of the drawback uh, which is covered in the next few slides uh, some of them uh, which are which ca can't be done with the engine okay now uh, for sccm you can manage the desktops servers and the laptops uh, and also this uh, within the sccm you can actually manage the devices over the internet with the help of uh, with the help of HTTPS communication or you can go for the cloud distribution points or cloud management gateway options that you have and also you can uh, configure uh, with the integration of the Intune when you go with the in, uh, integration with the in, uh, SCCM and Intune you can take the advantage of the cloud uh, because in the back end Intune is completely built on Azure AD right so within this uh, and uh, on this identity platform you have other products also can be integrated let's see here microsoft defender and atp so you can take the next generation of uh, atp uh, atp for the threat protection levels and you can you know configure that uh, to address the issues that are coming from on any of the devices it can be a mobile device or it can be on uh, windows devices uh, with the for example these next ne when i say next uh, generation of antivirus these uh, these products the normal antiviruses that does not stop your ransomware kind of you know uh, anti uh, problems right so for that kind of you no know, threats it's the next generation antivirus can do based on the behavior analysis in the back end uh, it can address such problems so that's where the most of the people are going these days with the microsoft defender atp and uh, this can be integrated with other cloud services also that's uh, that's a uh, utilization one business case when you go with the sccm plus intune uh, you can utilize these kind of you know features like atp and other cloud uh, services can be utilized and uh, you can deploy the applications to your mobile applications which cannot be done from a sccm and it can be done with the help of uh, Intune and you can do the software update management can be done with the help of Intune when you integrate uh, for those devices and operating system deployment is possible with the configuration manager but the if you want to go for autopilot uh, definitely you can utilize uh, with the Intune in the back end uh, and you can utilize for the existing devices options can be done uh, and the same task sequence with the task sequence you can utilize and you can deploy the autopilot configuration also for the uh, with the help of SCCM. So these are the few other things and you can monitor your complaints. Uh, for example, earlier we used to use the device level con uh, complaints policies with the help of uh, SCCM. And now uh, you have a you, you can choose the option whether you want to use these uh, complaints policies 
either to be monitored from a config MGR or from Intune. You have an option. So you can use that uh, configuration. So that's that's nothing but the co-management side. You can enable these uh, complaints policies to be only monitored from a CCM or from Intune. You can do that option with the help of uh, with the help of co-management capabilities. So when you move some of the options that, for example, on a SCCM, uh, on a SCCM, let's say that is you are monitoring the complaints policies, certain policies are not up to date and you want to block those devices not to access the emails or maybe the OneDrive, they, we want to you know, disable that kind of you know, options if a device is not complete. This option is not possible with the SCCM. So what you can do is when you move uh, these uh, configuration with the co-management capabilities, what you can do is you can actually enable uh, co-management and then move the complaints uh, specific workload to Intune. So this is one of the capabilities directly from Intune. Then what happens is when you move to the Intune, the only complaint specific capability workload, I use a word called now workload. So the, there are you know, different workloads, meaning set of features that can be moved to only to the Intune or to SCCM the way you want it. So when you move the Intune, this complaints uh, policies, you can take the advantage in the back end uh, backend and simply you can block the access if the device is not compliant okay with the help of conditional access policies so what happened is here you're giving the uh, power for your on-premises SCCM devices also the power uh, with the help of conditional access this is uh, one other advantage when you move to the uh, cloud or when you move to the Intune with the help of co-management so when we say co-management here, so what happens is the device will have a two agents. One is from SCCM, okay, and the same device also gets enrolled into Azure AD, okay, and the, uh, from Azure AD, the machine when it is registered, uh, we would actually the machine will gets reported or enrolled into the endpoint manager. So you can also manage the workloads. You can set the configuration here let's say only uh, complaints policies should go to Intune. You can set that. You can set that kind of you know, configuration or patching should you know move to the uh, Intune. You can do that kind of you know, configuration with the help of co-management. Okay. So in other way, co-management is a bridge actually. It's a, a bridge uh, between your SCCM, SCCM capabilities, and also Intune capabilities. So you started asking some of the questions that you know some some of the capabilities cannot be done from Intune, uh, or some of them cannot be done from SCC. So definitely, for example, the operating system deployment, uh, the way you deploy now the power that you have cannot be done directly from a Microsoft uh, Intune. From Intune, you have a good technology that is autopilot as a separate technology that also can be integrated into Intune, which we are going to talk it in a minute. But so that kind of you know options, uh, you might be in a lock, uh, you might be you know, lagging here in a SCCM. Let's say you have a different uh, single task sequence which can deploy the operating systems on a multiple devices. And these things uh, are not possible with Intune. But what is possible with Intune is it's possible uh, with the autopilot way method. So in that situation, uh, if you want to you know, take the advantage of the co-management and you just want to deploy this specific task sequence, example, the operating system deployment, you can do that uh, on this machine directly with the help of a system task sequence, the same task sequence, and you you can take the power of uh, cloud management gateway or your on-premises power and they can you can build it and the same mission also can be enrolled into Intune and then the patching is done from here and some some of the applications comes from Microsoft Business for store uh, directly. So you have an options directly. Uh, some some features definitely uh, are only possible with Intune. For example, Microsoft Store. This is also available with the, within the system, but lately introduced. But these options are already available within the Intune. Now you can take this power of Intune and you can configure. So 
I would say uh, the word would be you know you, you can use as the uh, co-management is a bridge actually where you can utilize the power of your existing on uh, on-premises as CCM and also the Intune integration so that few of the workloads can be moved and can be managed with a uh, combination of SCCM and Intune. So that's where you can utilize the um, co-management. So now uh, desktop analytics. So I'll talk in desktop analytics in a other way. Um, before we go into the desktop analytics, let's say you are trying to deploy operating system deployment or uh, or maybe you have some machines on a 1809 build and you wanted to upgrade to 1909 or maybe to other build let's say uh, 20 uh, 21 h1 or maybe you know 20 h2 example whatever the build you wanted to migrate so how do you do so normally why we go from a build is basically microsoft has a sac that is the servicing uh, channel so this channel what happens is uh, every every 18 months or half half yearly microsoft actually releases uh, two builds uh, one could be let's say now the current naming convention is h1 and h2 that's a half yearly so first half and the second half the current naming standards when we move you know further uh, we can learn but currently the naming format is h1 and h2 meaning it is year 21 is the year h1 the first half uh, i think you know may 10th was released the latest build at 21 h1 and you can expect uh, in the september or somewhere in the h2 build example so oh so these builds are valid uh, close to 18 months uh, so within this 18 months you must have to patch or upgrade to the next version of the build so this is one bigger project which will run on your on-premises let's say you might have a device which is running on a older version of 1809 and this build is going to expire uh, example some xyz date so you must have to move to the next build let's say 1909 what if if you don't move so you're not going to receive the patches all of that stuff and this becomes as unsupported by microsoft meaning the applications also not compatible drivers also not compatible so it's a vulnerable uh, machine altogether so you must have to upgrade to the latest build for that what you do is currently on sccm with the help of sccm you would uh, use the servicing uh, channel within the sccm uh, servicing channel options or you might upgrade with the in place uh, upgrade options with the task sequence so what are the challenges with this is you never know what kind of applications are compatible or what kind of uh, drivers are compatible most of the cases drivers and the applications uh, we never know that you know when you move from 1809 to 1909 build you never know that these applications or these drivers might not be compatible so what you can do is uh, you might be picking up some machines randomly or you you think that you know blindly that hey i want to test on a 10 bills so give me one machine from an account section or give me one machine from some other build or you yourself creates a lab with the older build and install some applications and you test it finally you might you know encounter some drivers issues and you fix it and you moved it but when we move to the actual production uh, one or other application might not be compatible or causing some issues so you come to know that hey this is uh, causing issue because i have not tested or i have not tested in a real scenario that is the use case of that specific application so such uh, scenarios you might be you know encounter in the real world cases so how you can address this with the help of da what you can do is it what happens is it actually gives the if you look at the current problem in this not the uh, deployment issues it's actually issue to identify the right test machine right so that's a problem what what you have done is here you have picked manually some of the uh, machines later upon you ask your business to give the some of the build machines and you pushed it it might be working on your machines as well as on the business machines but in a real world when you when it actually reaches to some other test users it might not be working fine because uh, we never analyzed 
uh, this could be a one of the real test case. So to address these problems, DA, which is a purely cloud-based service, very similar to Intune, it's a purely cloud-based uh, solution, meaning, uh, uh, meaning what, what, how this works, let's understand. So what they do is they actually have an error reporting capability. So you need to know, send all the required data to Microsoft Cloud Service. And then uh, similarly, this is your X company. Similarly, Y company also sends Z company, A, B, C, different companies will send to all of them will send to here. So they might be running on a different versions of bill. Same application might be running and it might be crashing. All that events will be you know, registered in the cloud based service, which is a DA in this case. And then they can share some kind of insights to you saying that, hey, uh, this is not going to work. Uh, on this specific bill, this driver might not be compatible. So it gives that kind of you know, information to you and based on that information, it will say, hey, you you can actually, uh, you can test these machines could be a proper test machines. You can, you know, consider, um, you, you can consider these test machines as the test pilot machines. That's how it can suggest. Uh, what happens after suggest, you can create on these machines, a servicing channel, meaning you have to do it for again from a SCCM console. There is no change in the SCCM console that you are currently doing. So it just helps you to identify the, what is the right target machines. Getting me? So if you ask me in one, uh, one way, what is the advantage of the DA utilization? DA gives you two things, two, three things like it gives you the driver's compatibility, application compatibility, hardware compatibility. Along with that, it can identify the right audience so that you can create on those machines as a pilot test machines. Then you can deploy them. The uh, you can deploy the latest build and it may or may not work. You can you know troubleshoot on that, but it helps you to find out the right test audience. So that's where the DA will be used. Okay, and uh, technically uh, for DA you need to have the Azure subscription is needed. Okay, and uh, backend it actually creates the uh, log analytic. Uh, workspace in the back end so that all the logs will be all the information would be you no know, stream to that log analytic service for that you're not gonna charge unless if you aggressively charge aggressively if you configure some kind of you know, configuration you're gonna charge otherwise even though you have a azure subscription you're not gonna charge so within this uh, you have the desktop analytics here okay i didn't configure here desktop analytics at this point of time, this is where you can configure. So once you have done this step one and two and three, two, if I'm correct. So this is where you just have to, you know, give your Azure subscription, all of that later point from from the SCSM console, you need to do some other configurations. It does in the back end all of that analytics. OK, then uh, your configuration will be you know, populated after 72 hours. It takes you know more than 72 hours time to populate uh, that specific data saying, mm -hmm. hey, you know what you can, uh, what are the applications are compatible, what application might not be compatible. And also it gives you a creating a pilot collections. It will give you the pilot devices collections. It can you know give you or it can suggest you if first test it here, it might not work, then you can test it in that uh, those machines and you can find out hey this application is really not going to work on this machine so we need to find out some other alternative way or keep those machines for some time on that specific build okay step one here configuration is uh, which i have just shown here from the portal you will do it so after once you're doing it here you actually get a specific uh, subscription id kind of thing you are going to get it so that would be a specific thing for you, for only your company okay and uh, based on that it's gonna uh, have the build and also you also have the desktop analytics specific client agent settings also needs to be configured to uh, send the diagnostic data information these data also you need to you know uh, send the telemetry data where uh, you need to know work on this specific key and there is a something called a commercial ID. So your uh, desktop analytic will be tied up with this uh, commercial ID. So this is a unique ID will be available will be given to you when you configure 
this specific one here so here when you do this configuration or with your subscription it's going to give you a specific key for you okay once you get that key uh, then uh, all the data from your company the diagnostic data which is getting analyzed will be tagged with this commercial id and it will send to you which is a confidential id in fact um, uh, and based on that analysis will be done and later point you are going to get the uh, here the first step would be you are going to uh, get it here within the desktop analytics the machines will be populated post to this configuration and uh, that information will be populated after 72 hours uh, or it might take more time also maybe a week example uh, example that's but what microsoft says is officially 72 hours okay so let's take a week time after that it will analyze and give you the full details of the information okay and then uh, based on that you get the you know this is not working this is not working all that stuff you know you come to know and once you you know create here the required specific plans actually it's going to populate it uh, within the da here okay but at the end if you ask as a ccm admin uh, am i deploying uh, or am i creating servicing plans uh, in the desktop analytics no you're going to create the servicing plans where you used to do it earlier so the same the servicing options all of stuff will come here only but it will help you to identify the hardware applications and the build information you get the proper analytics will be done for you okay for desktop analytics you just need the azure subscription okay that subscription also you are not going to charge you're not going to charge if you use a default configuration okay meaning it's almost free almost free this is almost free i would say okay this is almost free so i would recommend you know when you're trying with the da go for a dedicated uh, as your subscription as a pay as you go on your company pay uh, method and you're not going to charge for that the one would be the autopilot so coming back to the autopilot so let's let's take current situation what we are trying to do with the sccm so what we are trying to do is with the sccm let's say dell or hp or maybe your hardware vendor who supplies the devices to you and what you're trying to do is currently you will be taking that machine which has already windows 10 maybe it might be a professional or you want it to uh, convert to enterprise so what you're doing you're actually uh, doing the deployment on existing the newly given machine with the help of sccm you're doing the operating system deployment with all the uh, you with a custom golden image you're pushing that image and then applications within the task sequence customizations all of that stuff is running so here time and cost is involved uh, because if you look at these hardware vendors already shipping a device with the preloaded operating system so if there is an option to convert this operating system to usable case uh, and uh, with the your organization standards it would be good that's where the autopilot has uh, come up it's a technology meaning this autopilot can be integrated with sccm or it can be integrated with microsoft store for business it can also integrated with intune okay so we're going to uh, look at the intune and sccm options a little partially with the microsoft store for business options so <clears throat> let me show you how the autopilot will work uh, in an easy way we are going to uh, deeper drive this later point uh, the types of autopilot methods and all of that but just to give you what exactly autopilot so windows autopilot is a technology let's say you have a device uh, when you start this device as a freshly newly device which is coming from your OEM vendor or maybe you have done the reset of the device it will start asking for the regional keyboard uh, settings kind of you know things who's going to use this device the user so these things will be automated by Windows Autopilot with a technology uh, what it does is it actually connects to in the back into Azure AD and also to the Azure uh, AD along with the autopilot server in the back end and it will check for the hardware ID of this machine so there is a uh, spe machine specific hardware ID uh, will be there so that ID if it is matching okay within the autopilot uh, server then 
it will look for a profile. There's something called a profile. I'm going to talk on that later point. So profile consists of what uh, kind of you know applications to be deployed, what kind of uh, policies to be deployed. All of that stuff will be there within that profile. So it, it just comes to this device uh, after downloading that profile, and then it will this machine gets jo joined to Azure AD first step as a first step to Azure AD and then it gets also enrolled into your MDM which is in this case uh, your Intune and then the required application will be pushed from your MDM required configurations will be pushed directly from the uh, MDM again when I say push this can be two methods one is before the user login other one would be the after the user login so that depends on the profile that we configure here in the autopilot but what is happening on this machine you're actually utilizing the uh, the machine directly from hardware vendor who shipped or maybe the uh, the reset machine you're utilizing without reformatting okay so this is the autopilot uh, in other way. So in this case, instead of uh, you actually get the hardware ID, your reseller or your hardware vendor can upload the hardware IDs uh, instead of you, or they can send the hardware IDs. Let's say you ordered 10,000 devices, the 10,000 devices uh, information will be sent to you. Okay, and you can upload to autopilot server, or in case if you grant the permissions to them, uh, they can also upload on behalf of you so that uh, the devices will be available later point you can assign these devices uh, to the required users or you can just upload and leave it so that any user who can you know want to utilize they can utilize uh, so the when they actually log in the applications will come from a Microsoft Intune after uh, after log on or you can do as I said, you know, there are two options. One would be the after logon, other one would be the uh, you can, you know, pre stage the applications or pre provision. We would say the right word would be the pre provision. So the applications will be already available. So when the user starts, uh, he gets the, all the applications. So this is a technology altogether uh, with the autopilot. Okay, so we have autopilot technology which we are going to cover on that. So for this, uh, you can also do the life cycle of device management also with the help of autopilot. You can reprovision the device to the previous state. So you no need to redeploy. Just simply click on that so that user can redeploy it. When we learn the autopilot, uh, definitely the profile uh, option. So you have the authentication to be you no know, scaped, all of that stuff. Along with that, a ESP is the, you know, enrollment status page we call it in a short ESP if anybody doesn't know uh, so here you have an option to you know block the user for a certain time and uh, so that user can if something goes wrong in maybe in a white law or pre provisioning method then you can collect the logs and get that stuff uh, that configurations you can do it with ESP and ESPs can be you know created multiple things you can do that so these options will be uh, learned later point not now. Okay, so that's the overview of the of Windows Autopilot. And coming back to the Windows Enterprise Admin Center. So this is the Admin Center is a tool which I just shown here. If you remember a couple of minutes back, this is a tool, uh, Admin Center web portal. So from here you can manage the devices even uh, from a system so single console at this point of time we can say uh, here it is as the single console which can address your uh, configuration one-stop website as i said here but uh, it's not fully uh, matured but yes it's still evolving uh, if you look at um, some of the devices for example here uh, the config mgr this device is actually coming from configuration manager meaning there is no uh, not this maybe let's take another one maybe this one so if I take this this is the domain controller um, NH20 DC01 this is a domain controller and you see here you can get the collections you get the applications and you can you know do the same pivot scripts can be executed all of that stuff can be done uh, directly from a single console so Microsoft has its own vision to replace might be who knows uh, in a future to replace the system console to do everything directly from single console but for now uh, 
yes you know not everything can be cannot be done from a from this console but you know things are changing so if you see here these are the preview options okay so if a device is just the enrolled into intune i might not get it uh, the same options uh, within this console uh, these things like a collections all of that stuff but this is in tune with the windows seems to be yeah so single console that's what i wanted to see here to manage like whatever the five technologies we talked can be learned from the single console thank you friends for watching this small nugget and i hope you got now a good understanding about microsoft endpoint manager and their products now we will be jumping into the next lecture by clicking this specific playlist which is coming up on your end screen and we will be you now navigating to the next lecture as the lecture 2 uh, which talks about understanding of Azure AD with relation with Intune.